Good afternoon everyone, this is the doctor, and I hope you're having a fantastic day today. It is another beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest, and this is going to be the first time that I've ever come to you guys on webcam. So hello to all of you guys out there. We got Cocopuff down here right below us. He is going to be joining us. For those of you who have never been on my Twitch stream, I usually stream with a dog cam and a face cam. So I am going to try and let you guys get a little bit involved with my dogs and actually see my face from here on out. So today we're going to be going over sub jobs and we're going to be talking a whole lot of different things in regards to sub jobs. We're going to be talking about things like how you choose them, the abilities that you're going to use and how I make my personal decision on sub jobs, because I think there's a lot of people out there who maybe choose sub jobs for the wrong reason right now, or they're trapped in kind of that initial meta where it was a really glass cannon meta. And so it really became like, oh, I need the attack with the longest range, like Shuriken, for example, which is just going to one shot people because that it would back in the beginning. But now we're starting to get to that point where you have to strategize, you have to think, and you really have to kind of look at the buffs that you're going to be applying to yourself. You have to look at the modifiers. So let's go ahead and hop in here. And we're going to go ahead and go through essentially my main roster right now. So we're going to take a look at Sid. And we're going to go ahead and go to his ability set menu, you guys. So that's going to be this one right here. And if you didn't know, you can long click on the main job and the sub command in order to see what ability he's going to get. So if we long click on Sword Saint, you do see he's going to get Crush Armor, he's going to get Crest of the Black Line, he's going to get Crush Weapon, Divine Ruination, and Shadow Blade. So one of the things I'm going to notice here immediately is that he gets one buff technique. And yes, before you guys comment, I do know it's not fully leveled up. Sid is currently being worked on in my party. Uh, but you should be leveling up all of your passive abilities, all of your weapon abilities, because you never know what the AI is going to use. That would be my recommendation. And honestly, you never know when you're going to need, especially in manually PvP, something that might be out of the blue, something you might not expect. So so we kind of got he's got one passive buff technique and now we're going to look at what his sub job brings. So we're going to see his sub job brings Hallowed Bolt, which is going to be an AOE damage attack, brings Crush Helm, which is a single target, Dusk Blade, which is a absorb targets TP technique. And so I kind of got to look at this and I got to look at, well, Crush Helm's high AP, Hallowed Bolt's high AP, Dusk Blade's high AP. And I kind of got to wonder, do I have the capability to get to that AP in the first place? Does he have the survivability, for example? Does he have the passive buffs or the buffs to raise his AP up? So when we looked at Sword Saint, we saw, oh yeah, he has Crest of the Black Line. Let's see. So it's an 18 TP ability, so that is going to give him a decent amount of AP. And of course, he's going to pop that first, right? The AI is going to use that automatically before it moves in. So it's going to run in, it's going to pop that, and let's see what the uh, duration of that is. Three turns. So three turns is basically a very powerful buff, and I would always look at buffs in terms of how long their turn length is, because a lot of the times, if you are using the AI, it is not going to actively use the correct buff in the correct time. So it's never gonna charge into an enemy army and use Utsusemi, for example. It's gonna pop Utsusemi and then it's gonna move in and you're gonna have that evasion buff and you're gonna be using it on turn, your character's not gonna get attacked. So I like the three turn passive buffs and I would think about that, right? So just looking at my Sid here, I'm like, oh, maybe I don't want him on Sword Knight sub. Let's take a look at what he's got for, uh, let's do Knight first. So for Knight, He's got all of these break abilities. So already, I mean, I don't really need offensive power, right? He's got divine healing, which raises his own max HP for three turns. It is only TP 12 though. So the lower the TP, the less AP you're gonna get back. He does have speed break and magic break. So the divine healing though, the divine healing, you know, it, it only has two uses. So I'm keeping that in mind as well. And it's raising max HP. All right, let's take a look at Samurai Sub. So for Samurai Sub, you got Meditation, which is going to be one turn use, cost 20 TP, raise the bravery of allies around you. You got Illusion, which in my opinion is one of the best buffing skills in the game right now. The reason I think that is it not only affects you and your allies, it's a high TP ability, so it's going to give high AP back to you, and it's going to raise your evasion for three turns 
And that is a powerful combination. Now, if you could set your unit up right, so if you, for example, set Sid on the far right in a guild battle setting, he's gonna run to the left, buff with Illusion your middle character, and then he'll run to the left again and buff that secondary character with Illusion. So already I'm thinking, all right, I see Illusion, that's a flag for me that this might be a really good ability to invest in, a really good ability to use, right? Because I know how the AI is gonna function and use it, I know it's gonna wanna use it twice, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of AP back for that. Looking at his other abilities, Congo, I mean, okay. Night Veil, small damage, blind. Then Devotion, raises his own critical attack and uh, attack for three turns. And that's gonna be two uses and it's gonna be TP 20. So again, you're getting that secondary self buff and that buff is gonna be lasting for three turns. So not only if I set my Samurai sub, would Orlando be able to self buff himself with three different buffs for three turns. So all of those buffs are gonna be useful, right? No matter what, when my Orlando gets in and starts attacking, he's gonna have those buffs up. But not only that, it's gonna give him an additional amount of AP, and it's really going to get in there and sort of make your character stronger, right? It's gonna stop your character from charging into the center. It's gonna really get those buffs onto your characters, and it's really gonna be very powerful. And I think there's a lot of mistakes we see made with a lot of these abilities. And the first one that I think about is Engelbert. And the reason I'm thinking about Engelbert right now is I'm thinking about his ability Sentinel, and Mont also has Sentinel. And it's a very powerful ability. It has, you know, such utility if it's used properly, like in a manual PvP situation. But the AI will just pop Sentinel when he's literally on the other side of the map. And Sentinel only gives a buff duration for anywhere, like for one turn. Like literally that's the buff duration of Sentinel. So the only point of using Sentinel essentially is to increase the AP of Engelbert. So thinking about that, I think like, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna set a sub job, I really wanna set a sub job that's gonna benefit me, that's gonna get passives to all of my characters, and that's gonna let me buff multiple characters, right? And I think that's what it really comes down to is you need to set your sub jobs based around how you're gonna buff your team and what those passives are gonna be. Uh, I'll tell you guys a story right now. I recently tried to get into top 1000 arena this week. I, I started out the week, I'm like, this is the week that I'm gonna get to top 1000 arena. And, you know, I was very excited about it and I got really passionate about it. And then the next morning I saw a comment on one of my videos and it was talking about the ability synergy and the surprisingness of my ability synergies of my characters. And I think that shows, you know, th they said they'd fought me in top 1000 arena and I was like, okay. And for those that don't know, my top 1000 arena team right now is Sid, it's gonna be uh, Sir O, and it's gonna be Ryu. And that is not a uh, common setup. <laughs> and there's a lot of passive buffs that my characters are using to buff themselves up, to buff the allies up. And it really brings out a power in your characters that you really don't see all the time. So another great example of this is thinking about Guild Wars, you guys. So when you're looking at your passive abilities and your sub jobs, you're gonna wanna look at how many uses they have. So for example, I usually run Sid and Sir O, and Sid has access to Illusion. For those that don't know, Sir O is Samurai, so he of course has access to Illusion as well. And Illusion only has two uses. And in Guild Wars, your uses are used up once you use them. So what you see happening a lot in Guild Wars is in the first battle, your characters are gonna pop all of their abilities that are passive, because most of them probably have two uses. They're gonna charge into the center. First match, you're just gonna mop the enemy, right? Second match, you're gonna go in and none of your characters are gonna have their abilities, or they're only gonna have like one single buff ability that's not nearly as good anymore. Well, if you set two people with Samurai Sub and they both have Illusion, you're gonna be able to buff Illusion on all your characters, which means each one is only gonna proc Illusion once. And then you're gonna be able to have that Illusion buff for the second round of Guild Wars. So that's another consideration to take into effect when you're considering how your sub job synergies are gonna line up. And you wanna make sure that they're gonna have different buffs as well, right? So like I know that my Sir O is gonna buff attack and critical hit as well. So he's gonna pop that illusion, he's gonna run in, he's gonna pop devotion, I believe it's called, which is gonna do attack and critical hit. 
and he's going to have that passive buffs. Ryu is probably going to run in and throw another critical buff and missile attack up on him, which again, Ryu maybe not the best buff synergy for me. But again, you know, I I I don't have a ton of UR units, so <laughs> and I made a couple mistakes leveling my units, so you know that's just kind of the way it goes so i think the most important thing when we're here talking about sub jobs and developing it is going to be talking about those synergies talking about the number of uses making sure you're actually looking at those passive buffs because for a long time the meta has been you know how can i set shuriken and throw a shuriken and one shot someone so <laughs> we we are transitioning away from that you guys and we are entering sort of a a new world now where we need to be thinking about a whole bunch of different things so thank you so much you guys i've really enjoyed making these videos for you guys it's really exciting to be on face cam for the first time you can see i have clearly put coco puff to sleep over there uh, make sure you check out my uh, description down below. I do have links to my Discord. I do have links to all the resources that I use in all of my videos. If you want to come say hi, go ahead and hop on Discord and shoot me a private message. If you guys want to come see my stream, I do stream every night. So right now we are adjusting our time. So I believe tonight is going to be 5.30 p.m. to about 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. And of course, there's also resources to support me down there. If any of you guys want to help support me and contribute to me continuing this type of content. So thank you so much, you guys, and have a great day. I should probably put the end card up now.